Well, SLAC used to be the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center. It is now, um, it's a national lab in the Department of Energy family of national labs. This one focuses predominantly on accelerator, linear accelerator technology. Um, we also have multiple research efforts going on at the lab. SLAC is bigger than most people realize. So we have about 1,400 people working on staff now. We have 140 buildings. The accelerator is two miles long. And it is the longest linear single building on Earth. The thing that you're looking at when, you're, when you look at the Klystron Gallery, um, this is a, a mock-up of what's actually going on um, underground from where you'd be standing right here up above the accelerator that's actually 10 meters underground, so 30 feet below the surface. And so the copper tubes, actually the inside of those copper tubes look like a little bit of a, like a tuna can almost. And then there's a hole down the middle and that's where the electrons get accelerated. And so if you walk into this room, you'll see these big orange container, big cylinders, orange cylinders. Those are the source of radio frequency energy, which is pumping this long stretch of, of stacked up tuna cans um, from either end and creates a standing wave of radio frequency um, electric field. And so when you walk into this Klystron gallery and you look up and you look down and you cannot see the end, it is really heartwarming to know that humans back in 1962 were able to build this thing that was so perfectly straight over such an incredible distance. The SXR hutch here is, they typically study condensed, condensed matter. And so they're looking at novel materials um, used for computing industry, storage, magnetic materials. This is AMO. We study the spectroscopy of molecules. And then what we're after is how does the structure of a molecule impact how fast it reacts um, for photosynthesis, whatever we may be interested in. This room is called it the accelerator control room. It's new location, they have it sort of almost like a fishbowl where there's a big glass window where if you're in this building, you can look through the glass window and watch the operators running the accelerator. Um, looking at screens and figuring out what's going on is essentially what they're always trying to do because the machine is always operating in a condition where it's a little bit broken and it never really is working absolutely perfectly. So largely when they're in there looking at the computer screens, they're looking at all of these measurements that happen about the electrons on their way to making x-rays. In the future, the part of the construction that they're building is called LCLS2, and it's this upgrade that will turn on sometime in 2020, late 2020, we'll start using it where instead of firing 120 times per second, they have a new version of the accelerator that is superconducting. Instead of having 120 photographs per second, we're going to get a million photographs per second. So I think what's actually most interesting about this is not just that we're gonna record the same data, but you know, 10,000 10, times faster. It's that we're actually gonna think about how we perform experiments differently.